Hello and welcome to my floss tube. Uh, I'm Nancy, this is Bohemian Stitchery and I haven't filmed for, for ages. I, like, I think it's been about six weeks. I think it was the end of January that I last filmed. And <laughs> the problem is the longer you leave it, the more stuff you got to list in order to cover. And then you start thinking, this is going to take forever to, me get the, to get this video done. So I keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Anyway, uh, I'm a bit of a mess. I'm sorry. It's hot. Um, I've been, uh, I ran this morning. I did a 20K, hard 20K run this morning. And then uh, I've been trying to clear a shed this afternoon. So I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit of a mess, but that's okay. Let's film a floss tube anyway. At least if I get it done, it'll be done. So, um, so welcome to everybody. or Welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, over the last six weeks, I seem to have got a few new subscribers. I'm still not quite at the thousand yet, but I'm, I'm getting close. So welcome to everybody who's new. Um, thank you for coming and spending some time with me. Uh, this is a channel all about cross stitch and um, all my fun and excitement with the cross stitch. Sorry, I can just looking at that. That's my Lowry stand. That's let's put that out of the camera. Ah, whatever. Who cares? It's there. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so all about cross stitch. Um, and uh, welcome back if you're a continuing subscriber and you've been watching me for a little while. I realized the other day I have been doing this for nearly a year. Now, 4th of April was my first one last year. And actually, I have a point to make about that. So one of my, um, my best stitching buddies, so I have, we, we've talked about the stitching games that I do, lots of stitching games, and I have a team. We have like a little dream team of five of us. Uh, there's two of us here in Australia, myself and Carla from Stitch Me Sane. Uh, there's two in the UK, so Michelle and Jenny are in the UK, and then there's Jennifer who's in the US. So we've kind of got all time zone covered, times time zones, time zones covered, um, and we kind of we've been playing Myths and Magic Stitch Wars together. We also play uh, like the Zombies game together. We're in Utopia together, so we're kind of this little close knit team. Anyway, Michelle, who's our our illustrious team leader was saying to me, do you remember when you did your first or around your first floss tube, you were going, hmm, do you know, if I could stitch 10 stitches a day, I'd be really happy. And she said, now look at you. She said, what you want to do is try and find that little bit of video and cut it and put it in. I'm not going to do that. That's way too much effort. But she's right. Now, this month, actually, last month, February, because uh, we are halfway through March now, just in case you don't know, it's the 16th of March today, so halfway through March. But in February, I did 14,037 stitches, and that was down on my January number. So it's a little, just a little bit more than 10 stitches a day. So, yeah, so we've really moved up. And I blame Floss Tube for that. I also blame my team. And all the stitch games, this is all your fault. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be stitching so much. So anyway, I have a lot to cover. I have two finishes. And you will have seen from the title of this um, floss tube that one of them is a big finish. So I have two finishes. Uh, I have lots of starts. I've got quite a few whips that I've worked on. I've got them all piled up here. I've been on a retreat since I saw you last. I've got some new acquisitions. And that's that's all, that's all on my list. <laughs> That'll do. That'll keep us busy for a while. So, most important thing, let's have a look at the, the, the finishes. So, I don't know. Do we start with this? I've got to start with this one. He, oh, sorry. I just knocked my camera. He is done. Oh, my God. There he is. You know what? I'm going to have to get that Lowry stand out of the way. That's just annoying me now. So let's move this. <laughs> there you go. See, this is professional, professional videos here. So there he is. Old Smokey. 25 years in the making. And he's finished at last. Uh, I have no idea how many stitches because uh, it was all paper. Obviously, I started this in June 1999. 
he languished for a few years, you know, life, etc. I started him over in the UK for my first husband. Uh, and uh, and I finally finished him last night, uh, the night before, last night. I can't remember. Anyway, it was in the last couple of days. So, and he looks amazing. So he needs a jolly good wash. As I've said before, like most old men, he's a bit smelly, could do with a good wash. Um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm chuffed. I'm gonna do this at pose because this is gonna be my thumbnail that I'm gonna use because frankly, I need to dine out on this. 25 years. Do you know, the problem is though, I was saying, oh, this is my oldest whip. Look, I've just got my oldest whip finished. And then I went to pull out what I thought was my second oldest whip. And the date on that <laughs> means that one's 26 years old. <laughs> so, oops. Anyway, never mind. I'll, I'll do that one next. Um, because that one's 26 years old and I'd like it to not be 30 years old before I finish it. But this guy finally, finally is done. Um, these bits of his smoke, that was all done in half stitch and it actually took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, and I was kind of losing interest by the end, but there, let's just admire him for another minute. Oh, he's so good. Right, okay, so that's my, my main finish. Let's pop him away, all ready for his bath. The second finish uh, is a little baby sampler. I've still got to frame it. So that's that one. So this is for my coach's little boy. And I finished that one oh, a little while back. Um, it also needs a wash. Um, that is a pattern by Stitch Rovia, which I got on Etsy, uh, and that was my travel project. So that one is also a finish. So two finishes this month. And you know what finishes mean? More starts, that's what finishes mean. So, um, so I'm going to allow myself, uh, what am I talking about allowing myself? I'm just gonna start all the things. Let's just start all the things, so much more fun. Right, okay, so that was the exciting thing. That's the finishes. Now, how am I going to tackle this? I think what I'll do is I've got my list and I'll just work through from my list as to what I've worked on. Um, I have taken note of how much I think I did in February. What I haven't done is brought out the ones that I've... Actually, that's a lie. I have. I've brought out the ones that I've worked on at the beginning of March because um, at the end of my last video, way long ago, I pulled numbers as to what I was going to stitch in February. And because I knew I wasn't going to get a chance to video at the beginning of March, I did that anyway. So I, I sat down and I worked out what, what I was going to do for my new starts and what I was going to do for um, the whips that I was going to work on. So some of them here are, are stuff that I've worked on through March. Anyway, enough. Right, uh, I'm not going to start with that one because that one's one I did at the retreat. Okay, so first one I worked on. This is a chart from the world of cross-stitching from, I don't know, a while ago. I haven't bought the world of cross-stitching for a long time. So uh, I don't think I've got a date on it, but it'll probably be about 2020 or... 2021 or uh, sorry 2000 or 2001 or something anyway it's called French Village um, it's full coverage only small now I had started this already on a piece of sort of grayish Ada and I didn't like how it was looking um, I know it's full coverage and I know that you wouldn't really see the fabric underneath but it just felt like I wasn't getting the the brightness out of the um, the threads, particularly sort of the lighter colours. So I put it down and I was like, yeah, what do I do? And so I thought, right, restart. So I'm just restarting on a piece of white, 14 count Ada. Oops, my light is pretty bright there. Let's move that so that it's not causing quite such a, there we go, that's where I got to. So I think I did. Let me have a look. 358 stitches on that. So I didn't quite make my goal on that one because um, my goal for each project I pick up is 
500 stitches at least. Um, some of them I have more for whatever reasons. Um, there's, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason in how I do things, I can assure you. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't like got this beautiful structure. It's just like, oh, I think I might do a thousand stitches on that one. So I put down a thousand stitches. So I kind of just go with it. But uh, yeah, so um, because of that, I will pick it up again later this year just to try and finish off um, my goal on that one. So that was French Village. Okay, um, now next one was Wood Splitters. This is a kit from Country Threads. That's what it's going to look like when it's finished. It is also full coverage. Uh, this is the one that I adopted from uh, a lady who had started it and was never going to finish it. I didn't do a lot in it. I think I only put a couple a hundred stitches or so. So that's where I'm at with it. Um, I have said this before. I didn't do all that stitching. The lady who uh, donated it to me, she did most of that. Where I've done is from sort of the diagonal downwards. So I put about a hundred more stitches in that. So that's done on a 16 count white Ada, which is what came in the kit. Um, and it is lovely. I have a, a, a friend of mine who I was on retreat with. She's actually finished it. And um, she's, I sent me a photo a while back, I think, and it looks great. So, so that's Wood Splitters. All right. Next one is in this. This is my travel couch. Okay, so this one is Ningaloo. It is a Dinky Dyes design. Uh, have I got a picture? Yes, this is, sorry, this is very disorganized. This is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. Okay, um, the colors are a lot brighter. Um, it's using Dinky Dyes silks, uh, which are beautiful to work with, really lovely. Very soft and gorgeous. That's the silk pack that came with it. So you can see the colors. And this is where I am at. There we go. Now this one, oh, <laughs> look at the creasing in that. That's terrible. Oh my God, Nancy. How bad is that? There we go. It's not going to be a huge amount better, but whatever. Um, so I use this one as a travel project. Also really good. It's also a good myths project because it's like you're using essentially a single color. So you don't have to constantly color change. I have got this down as uh, a finish, hopefully this year. Um, it's currently sitting in my travel pouch. Um, but I, at the moment, I'm working on, a, on another one on the train. Um, but I keep that one in there because it's done on paper and I'm always worried that one day I'm going to like get, sit down on the train, open up my stitching bag and realize I've forgotten to charge my tablet up, which means I won't be able to work on the piece that I've got in there. And I always want to have a backup one because you don't want to waste good train journey time and not be able to stitch because that would be rubbish. So that one got 441 stitches in February. I'll put that one away because there is another one in there that we're going to look at in a bit. Uh, okay, I did a little bit of work on Computer Wizard, which is a Heaven and Earth Designs by artwork by Randall Spangler. It's huge. This is my biggest Heaven and Earth. There we go. That's what it looks like, or it's gonna look like. Probably not my lifetime. It would look like that if somebody actually finished it. Probably not gonna be me, but that's okay. Um, it is 525 wide by 751 tall. Uh, it's on a bed sheet, uh, 25 count easy guide bed sheet. And I'm at the moment doing just black, so. You can't really see very much. There's a thread hanging. Obviously, I just abandoned it at some point. Uh, that's all I've done so far. That's not very exciting, is it? So, as you I am also just going to make a small. Oh, God. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. This is so unprofessional. I am so unprofessional. 
never mind. I just needed to make a small adjustment to my stand there. So you've got a really big picture of my hand right up against the camera. Okay, that was Computer Yip Wizard. I only put in 126 stitches, so barely anything at all in the whole scheme of things, um, particularly as that one is so massively enormous. Right, next one I also put some stitches in, which is also massively enormous. This is Lady and the Unicorn. This one is a Scarlet Quince. That's what it's gonna look like when it's finished. It also will very unlikely be finished in my lifetime, but that doesn't stop us stitching on it anyway. I'm doing this on an 18 count bed sheet, and it is a bed sheet. Uh, and I put in 234 stitches. Now, I this one, and I've talked about this one before, that's where I'm at so far. I struggle a little bit with this one because I've got it on paper, I've attempted to scan it into, oh, there's a whole lot of part threads there, which I really should work in one day because they're really annoying. Um, I attempted to scan it into Pattern Keeper. It didn't work very well. Um, it kind of, um, I couldn't get the grid on very well. Obviously it doesn't recognize symbols. So essentially all Pattern Keeper is, is a paper. It's just, I can touch the, thing rather than you know you have to pick up a pencil each time um and because of that i can't highlight a symbol and work out where they all are so i keep missing symbols which is always really frustrating i had started when i started this back in 2012 so this one is only 12 years old it's not 25 years old um when I'd started it back then, I'd started kind of doing rows of 10. I ended up with tram lines, which I didn't like. So I've sort of, you know, tried to move across. I think I also said to you, everything is blended in this. There's a hundred and something symbols. They're all blends. Um, well, actually, no, I lied. There's probably about four which aren't blends, but the, the rest of them are blends, which is why it's on 18 count, because you have to use two strands. Anyway, I was like, I'm just not sure how to tackle this. So I was chatting with Carla about it and she made a really good suggestion actually. She said, why not do kind of the edge of the tree, work your way down that because that'll be sort of similar colors. And then that gives you something to fill in as opposed to kind of just randomly sort of trying to stitch cross country, which I'm actually finding a bit frustrating. Normally cross country is the way I'll, I'll go on full coverage. I'm quite happy with it. But this one for some reason is just frustrating me. I also don't like the fact, I mean, my fabric is so big that it's just impossible to work with. And it just annoys me. It annoys me that I've got all of this. I mean, this is a huge piece of fabric. It's well, uh, I did tell you it's a bed sheet. Uh, it's over a metre wide and it's over a metre deep. And I have tacked out what, and I will use most of it. I mean, it's got a pretty reasonable, pretty healthy margin. Not like me. Normally I have really, <laughs> I am fabric chicken. I do like to, um, I do like to like play it very fine on margins, but this one has a particularly big one. But I think because my fabric is so big, it actually just, it's its unwieldy. So that's another thing that puts me off. Um, don't know what the solution is. <laughs> I'm just having a whinge. Let me have a whinge about it. I'm just gonna whinge about my project and then I'll put it away and I'll get back on with it. So so yeah, so I've got a, that, that's, that one's a challenge. Let me just say, it's a, it's a challenge. And it's one of those ones which, yeah, maybe it might get finished one day, maybe it won't. Who knows? Who cares? I don't. I don't care. Right. Next one is the Heaven and Earth Designs Sal. Uh, I am doing tin turn. Sorry, I've got a needle hanging out of that because I was working on that this morning. Where is my picture? So this is the stitch along that started beginning of this year. That's the one that I'm doing. That's what it will look like. So uh, the way it works, if you haven't come across it, which I'm sure most of you have, every three months we get sent three pages. <clears throat> For this particular project, it's always two and a bit, two pages and a partial because the three pages are going that way. And the goal is if you finish three pages, that's three full pages, I believe, uh, you get all 10 
uh, charts that were available for the stitch along. And if you finish the whole thing, you get two free charts from Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I'm obviously like everybody, we're, we're aiming to try and finish the whole thing. And this is where I'm at. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> I sound really surprised, but looking at it on camera, it it looks it's, it's looking really good. Um, I'm doing this two over one tenth stitch on a twenty eight count scrap. Let me say this is what I mean about the Nancy border. This is a Nancy border. It's about oh, I don't know that big <laughs> on either side. I just sewed a bit of fabric on. It's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, there's enough. There's I don't know. There's enough. Anyway, so, um, and I did have a bit of a complaint last time about tent stitch. I'm warming to it. I'm warming to it. As I'm going further on and also realising how quick it is, I'm not hating it as much as I thought I would. So that's a good thing. Um, I am not quite keep, kept up with it in that, I would have liked to have finished all first of these three pages before the next three came out. The next three come out on the 1st of April. I am not going to have them finished. I think I'm currently at 66% of the pages that we've got at the moment. Um, and I'd hoped to have been at 66 at the end of February, and I wasn't. So, but it's looking really good. <laughs> So yeah, so I don't know, I haven't written down how many stitches I've put into that, but it's it's quite a few thousand. So uh, so that's that one. All right, what else is on my list? Right, next one. This one was supposed to be, oh, authentic. Um, my paid this decade. This is my goal piece to try and finish. So Carla and I are doing a hashtag a hate this decade because what we'd like to do is finish, <laughs> finally, <laughs> finish a heaven and earth design. That one I'm hoping to finish, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't count because it's too small. <laughs> um, so this is my hate this decade that I'd like to finish. It's called The Garden. The artwork is by Jen DeLeaf. Celtic Designs. I love it. Um, I'm doing it for my bestie. Um, she also loves it, which is good. I have warned her that she'll have to wait at least until 2030 before she gets it. And she's cool with that, which is good. Uh, I didn't put a huge amount into it, but this is where I'm at. Sorry about the hanging threads. That's where I'm at so far. Now, the hilarious thing about this is I've got a non hade this decade as well, which I'll show you in a minute, um, which I'm doing on a piece of 25 count linen, which is beautiful. And I had it in my head that I was doing this on 25 count Easy Guide. And I kept thinking, oh, it's really hard to see. Maybe I'm going blind. Maybe I need to get better glasses. Why is it that I have to have the magnifier to see this? <laughs> and it's because I realise this is not 25 count at all, it's 28. <laughs> that's why it's so small and that's why I can't see it. And now that I know that, I feel a little better about it because I was starting to wonder, maybe it was my eyes that were starting to go funny. I'm doing it uh, one over one full cross. So there we go. So it's going to look amazing. The colours are fantastic. There are, there's quite a bit of block stitching in there, but there's, like most heaven and earth, there's a surprising amount of, you know, like confetti. You can see I've still got ninja stitches in and around here. I kind of, I do, I when I sit down to do it, I go, all right, I'll just do three ninja stitches and then I can get on to a bit where I can actually, you know, get some serious stitching done. So I, I clear the ninja stitches as I go. I don't leave them forever, but um, but yeah. I mean, it's not as confetti heavy as some, so um, it's actually pretty good. So that's the garden. I don't know, I haven't written down how many stitches I did on that because clearly when I wrote my list here, I lost interest in writing down how much I'd done. <laughs> I, th I think I did this at work. <laughs> When 
it was quiet, of course. So I think maybe I just kind of stopped checking Stitch Pal and just kind of wrote it down. So anyway, <laughs> don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Right, so that was the garden. Right, now the next one, this is my non-hade this decade. This is with Harold the Headless, if you remember from last time. Mistress of the Hunt 3. Uh, it, the artwork is by Heather Kramer and it's charted by Kaylee at the sewing shop.ca and it's fab. Uh, I love it, even with Harry the Headless. So I have only done a little bit on this. I haven't actually put a huge number of stitches on this. At this stage, both my Hade this decade and my non-Hade this decade are looking, according to Stitch Fowl, to be finished in about 2034. So, <laughs> so I kind of need to pull that back a little bit and do a bit more focused on it. But, but I was busy. I had, I had Old Smokey to finish, much more important. So, so that's where I'm at with that one. Can't really see very much. Obviously, top left start, one over one full cross on 25 count linen which is heavenly to stitch on heavenly okay so that's that so there's not really much progress on that i mean the problem with these big big projects is you you think you've done progress and then when you kind of hold it up in front of a camera it's like actually i haven't really done very much at all so all right let's pop that one away so that was mistress of the flag no, Mistress of the Hunt, even. Mistress of the Flag is a mirabilia. I'm not doing that one. Um, now, the next one I worked on was the... Oh, that's why it's because of the Quaker flag. Is that it? No, that's not it. I'm holding it up. It's the wrong one. Where's my Quaker flag? Here we are. Quaker flag. <laughs> that's why I had the flag in my brain. Okay, uh, this was a stitch along which started on the 26th of... January, that's correct, 26th of January, I should know that. Um, I'm doing the Australian Aboriginal flag. Um, it is designed by Vibsters on uh, Etsy. There's lots of people around the world doing these flags. They look fantastic. So I'd started it in January, obviously. I'd given myself a goal of a thousand stitches. I didn't get anywhere near that when I did it in January. Um, so I've done a little bit more and this, oh, can you see that? Yeah, this is where I'm at. Now, the reason I'm like working in what looks like a very odd way is because this uh, quite beautiful piece of 32 count linen, I think it's 32, is only just wide enough. I think this will have a serious Nancy border on it. Okay, I will be playing fabric chicken with this one. And so just to put my mind at rest, I was working, I started center and I'm working my way up and I'm going to do my edge all the way around just to make sure that I've got enough. Uh, I don't think I have a lot of leeway, if I remember rightly. I suspect it will be a classic about one and a half centimetre Nancy border on that one. Um, but you know what? It was such a beautiful piece of fabric and just the size that I sort of needed. And meh, it'll be okay. As long as this, as long as you don't run out of fabric, it, I, I always think it'll be fine. You could just, you know, add a bit of fa fabric to the side for framing. So, <laughs> oh dear. So that was the Quaker flag. Right. And the other last whip I worked on. Oh, I did work on this one. What a surprise. Um, Woman in a Field of Flowers. This is artwork by Edda Rosa. Uh, pattern by Stitches So Beautiful on Etsy. I know lots of people are doing this. There is a stitch along for it as well. Uh, it was when I pulled this one out that I realized that the garden was actually on 28 count because this one is on 25 count. Uh, I started bottom left, which is an odd place to start and it kind of feels weird stitching down there, but never mind. And I did put in about 400 stitches. 
four, five hundred stitches. So it's starting to come together. Um, and I, I quite enjoyed it. So, you know, sorry about everything's really folded. You can tell I don't iron. I don't, I, I don't iron clothes. I don't iron anything, you know. I, I probably will iron, like, my finishes. But that's different. I kind of think, what's the point of ironing when you're still working on it? <laughs> It straightens out in the cue snap. It's fine. I have better things to do. I have stitching to do. That's much more important to me than ironing. So, you know, only 24 hours in a day. I'd like to spend those 24 hours stitching. Okie dokie. Right, that's all the whips I worked on. Now, all the new starts. Because, as we all know, I turned 50 this year. In fact, I turned 50 in just over a month. And I'm doing... <laughs> The plan was to do 50 starts in my 50th year. I can tell you now that is going to blow out. <laughs> I'm going to be doing more than 50 starts because why not? Um, so I've got quite a lot of starts. I'd say I've got eight starts since I saw you last. And there'll be more on the horizon, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so the reason I had quite a few starts in February is because I did you... XS28, UXS29, whatever. Um, that was working on an unconventional cross stitch pattern every day for February, which I did, except I didn't work on one pattern, I worked on three. And at the beginning of February, I didn't have any, so I started three. Uh, I got over a thousand stitches on each of them, so I will show you those first. So the first one I worked on is actually a free pattern from Unconventional Cross Stitch. I love it because I love my horses. That's the one. It's called Unicorn and Roses. It is still available as far as I know. Now, it's not technically full coverage because you don't stitch the background. I chose to do it on a burgundy. Oh, my God, that looks really bright on the camera. It's bright. It's not quite that bright. It's a bit duller than that. But uh, but so I'm doing it on a burgundy 25 count Lagana. I started center. And doesn't that look amazing? Uh, it was kind of difficult because there was quite a lot of red in there, which was very similar to the red of the background. But that is the central rose. Yeah. There. And it looks fab. I'm so so pleased with how this is turning out. I don't a, a, a long time a long time ago, maybe about six months ago, I had put up a queer question to say what should I stitch that on black or blue? And I was going to go, oh, I'll do it on black. Oh, I'm not really sure I'd want to be stitching a full coverage on black. Although you know, I'm not so, I'm not ruling it out. I may do it one day. Uh, anyway. When the time came to actually stitch it, I realized I had this beautiful red and I thought that's actually gonna look amazing. So so there we go, Burgundy Lugana, 25 count, one over one, full cross. So that was the first unconventional cross that I did. I started, got over a thousand stitches. I can't remember the exact number, but it was more than a thousand on that one. Ooh, zippers, zippers. Right, the second one I did, oh, I love this one. Oh, absolutely love this one. This one is by Adrian Border. It is called She Had Flowers in Her Hair, version two. What I love so much about this one, which I did mention, I think, last time, but the expression on that woman's face is priceless. It's priceless. <laughs> I, I need this on my wall. She just, it, this look of like, oh my God, get this guy off me. <laughs> fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. You can see that she's got the thousand mile stare. She's, she is anywhere else but in that situation mentally. And I think, you go girl. Anyway, so um, I started that. I, I used a piece of my very precious 25 count linen. I started top center and I started it twice. <laughs> there we go. That's where I got to. The reason, and you can actually see where I frogged here. The reason I started it twice is I started it too high. 
and you know, Nancy borders and all that, I had cut my fabric so that it would fit with a decent border. So what was the point of starting it so high? And it was so high that I actually couldn't get it into my Q-snap properly. So after I'd done a couple of hundred stitches, I was like, oh, suck it up, suck it up, girl, take it out. So I did, I cut it all out and restarted and did just over a thousand stitches. There is a lot of confetti in this, a lot more than you think. So, so I'm working just up there somewhere. And I, the reason I did that rather than a corner start is I wanted to get to her face as quickly as I could. So, so yes, so that was, uh, that was my second unconventional cross. And then my third one, I got quite a lot done on it because I took it with me on the retreat and I stitched all the way on the flight home and got like five or 600 stitches in. So this one is called Horse Four Legs. I call it the Golden Horse. That's what it looks like. Uh, again, no background. So technically not full coverage, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Again, my game, my rules, and my rule says I'm doing it as full coverage. So there you go. <laughs> um, oh, hello. Everything's falling out here. Don't fall out. Oh, man, don't fall out. Right. Uh, this is where I got to. Doesn't look like much. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything at all right now, but I've done quite a bit. Ugh. And I'm doing this on a chocolate brown. Oh, look at that. Creasing. Nancy, you're a disgrace. Um, chocolate brown, 25 count Lagana. And I'll be honest with you. <laughs> okay, when I was first stitching this and I first put up a, a, a picture on Instagram, it looked all the world like snot to me on poop. <laughs> because my camera was so bad. So I kind of had commented to my friends, oh, it's not on poop. And one of my friends, uh, this is this is my team, said, uh, yeah, it's like a bird poop uh, and the bird's been eating berries. Now, oh, see, this is my problem. I keep seeing things in there I shouldn't see. Now it's got the an odd shape of... Uh, I don't know, a set of ovaries. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh my God, what is wrong with me? Oh dear. Oh. Huh. This must be menopause, seriously. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I've got quite a lot done. It will end up looking like a horse at some point. Right now it doesn't. But you know what? It will. Move it on then, shall we? Oh dear. Okay, so that was that one. I did uh, quite a lot of that. As I said, I took it away on retreat. I didn't stitch on retreat because it was a Mirabilia retreat. So I only stitched Mirabilia's at the retreat. But like, you know, after after we'd finished and gone back to the apartment and stuff, we, we kind of stitched on what we want. So that was start number three. Start number four was, is, it's not past tense, it still is. Uh, my leap year long dog, long dog leap year, whatever, long dog for the leap year. I started this on the 29th of February. It is, oh my God, I don't have a picture. It's death by cross stitch. Everybody knows death by cross stitch. Oh, do you know what this means? This means I'm going to have to edit this damn video, which means I'm going to have to put a picture of it. I was hoping I didn't have to edit. Never mind. It's all good. Okay. I, I, I'll just remember I have to put this one picture in. So Death by Cross Stitch uh, by Long Dog Samplers. I am doing this on a 40 count Graziano linen, which I had in my stash. Uh, this is where I'm at. I haven't done a lot, obviously, because it was only the 29th of February, which is only a couple of weeks ago. So I'm actually okay with the 40 count. I was really nervous because I thought, oh, it's so small and I'm so blind and how am I going to see it? And it's actually not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Obviously completely creased because this is me and they're all completely creased. Uh, you can't see very much. I've done a center start 
And the way that we are stitching this, because uh, Carla started this at the same time as well, she's doing hers on a sort of a, was it peach, Carla? I can't remember it, whether it was a sort of pinky peach 25 count and she's doing it two over one because it's a really wide space 25 counts are really lush thick um, stitches. I'm doing this one over two on a 40 count and my color palette, let me show you my color palette. Where is it? Here we are. That's my color palette. Oh, how cool is that? That is a bag of bits as you can see, which I've gathered. And this is only a small bag. This is, sorry, my head is just getting cut off from the top of the camera. This is only a small bag of bits. I have an entire box of bits, but I just pulled out some handfuls and put it into my bag. You know, you can see these have obviously come from old kits and stuff, which God knows what the kit was, and bits of pieces left over and all sorts of things. And that's how I'm stitching it. I'm basically picking a color, going with it. Pick another color. Go with it, see how it goes. So I am limiting myself to whatever is in this particular bag. That's my death by cross stitch bag. And I reckon it's gonna look great. <laughs> and it's really nice to not have to worry about, have you got the right color? All you're gonna do is just go, oh, I think I like the look of that. So at the moment, I've obviously started with some purples. Um, as you can see, I've just started with a few purples there. Uh, and, uh, but I'll just, go with it it'll end up being like a real rainbow it'll be good good fun very liberating good fun stitching so that was my leakier long dog oh i can't believe i'm gonna have to edit this thing now right now what else did i start ah uh valentine's day um because i nobody gave me anything for valentine's day because <laughs> Who would? I mean, you know. <laughs> so Carla and I decided to start a project as we do. She said to me, do you have any heart charts? I was like, well, I've got a freebie from Charting Creations. So um, she was like, oh, okay. So she popped on and got that one. It's called a Silhouette Heart. It's a freebie from their Facebook page. I'm doing it in a single color. It is this beautiful silk. Oh, doesn't that come up nicely on the camera? Look at that. Uh, I have a lot of it. This is by uh, Stitches and Spice. Um, uh, and the lady who used to be Stitches and Spice, I actually sat on her table at the at retreat. I bought this off her back in 2018, not knowing what to do with it. Um, it's lovely silk. It's not divisible. So you just use... It is as it is. I'm doing it on a peach colored uh, 25, uh, sorry, 28 count linen. And I was a bit worried because do I do two over one, one over one, but actually one over one covers beautifully. And I'm doing the whole thing in, in those silks. As I said, I, I did count. I know how many meters I've got of it. And I kind of did a bit of a back of the envelope count uh, in terms of how many stitches there are and I should have enough but just in case what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you know some strategic bits which if they happen to be stitched in another color would still look okay so um, so yeah so that was my Valentine's Day start that was a silhouette heart by charting creations Let's pop that one away uh, okay, and then I had two starts at the retreat because why not? I was there for two days. Oh, I forgot, I forgot to show you the, the, the whip that I worked on at the retreat. I put her all aside here thinking I'd come back to her, but uh, I worked on Leilani, the hula dancer. Uh, again, that I don't have a picture. Oh, more editing. I'll stick her up here. She's also a freebie from Nora Corbett. Um, I have been working on her for a little while and I finally got her skirt finished. Well, finished. There's a lot of beads to go on it. So I've got the stitching of her skirt finished. Um, I'm going to do her upper body one over one. Um, and there's quite a lot of skin, so it's going to take a while. But I was really pleased that I actually finally got the skirt part done. Uh, so that was the whip that I worked on whilst I was at the retreat. And then I also started two new things. Because why not? I'm at a retreat and let's start all the things. So I started 
Willow Queen by Nora Corbett, which I love. There's actually a Mirabilia one very similar called Black Forest Empress something. I don't know. I have to have her. I have to have her. She's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So I do this one first because she's quite little, like most Noras. The Noras themselves, ooh, my back's a bit sore. The Noras themselves are quite small and and doable. I'm doing the, oh, you can't really see very much. I mean, I, that's, that's my start. I'm doing this on a piece of printed fabric, which was in my stash. I have no idea where I got it from, but it was perfect for this project. Um, that was upside down. <laughs> Not that it matters. You really can't see very much. That's the way it goes. Um, it's a 28 count, bits of, bits of thread all over it. 28 count, uh, I'm doing it two over one using all the call fours. Uh, and um, I have to thank um, one of the lovely ladies from the table um, from the retreat, although she wasn't at this retreat, she's been at previous retreats and she very kindly let me have this one. A uh, bit of stitchy kindness and gave me also all of her leftover beads because she stitched it and she had all these leftover beads and she gave them to me as well, which was like, well, I have to start her. So anyway, so that's um, Willow Queen. So that was my first start at the retreat. And then the second start at the retreat. Oh, projects everywhere here. God. The second start at the retreat was Miss Queen Bee. Also Nora Corbett. Uh, I bought her at the last time I went on the Mirabilia retreat, which was in 2019 or 20, beginning of 2020. And I bought a piece of fabric specially for her, which was bee fabric. But what I hadn't realized is that, and this is my start, it's only little. Oh, look at my, my needle minder on there. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, do you know what? My light is making my creases look worse. If I didn't have that light there, <laughs> my creases would... They'd still be there, but they just wouldn't look so bad. Um, I hadn't realised this is 40 count. <laughs> and it's really small. <laughs> it's really hard to see. Um, because it's printed, it's a piece of printed 40 count. I think it's a fabric flare. Yeah, fabric flare. It's called Berkshire Hive, I think. And it's a 40 count. And I bought it specially to do Miss Queen Bee, but then that was four years ago. And you know what? My eyes were a lot better four years ago than they are now. Um, I mean, once I got my eye into it and I was working under a magnifier, it wasn't so bad, but it was a lot slower going than some of the others because it was a little harder to see. If I put it that side. Oh, there you go. Okay, so... Um, now, because that's on 40 count, I'm going to have probably a little bit of problems with the beads, but I think what I'll do is I'll see if I can find some teeny tiny petite beads to go on there because it does have quite a lot of beading around her sleeves. This black here is all done in Whisper. Um, yeah, yeah, devil, devil's ass hair stuff. So, <laughs> um, but we'll worry about that when we get to it. I haven't actually got the Whisper. I'll just worry about that at another time that's a problem for a future nancy that's not my problem now okay and then the final start which actually i started at the beginning of march and can you imagine all right i know sit down everybody this is the only start i've had in march so far <gasps> um it is we started this for myths and it is uh, i didn't bring the, the cover photo it up here arctic blast by carolyn manning i have done quite a lot it's still in the q snap because it's my travel piece that's where i'm at i've got well over 2,000 stitches there i'm really enjoying it it's really it's a good myths project because it's quick a block stitching i'm doing it on a 16 count white ada i think 16 count is my sweet spot for carolyn manning there it's great it's absolutely fabulous um and uh yeah it's um it's moving really quickly so i my plan was when we got knocked out of myths i'd 
put this down and maybe get back to one of the ones that I wanted to finish. We <laughs> we kind of got unceremoniously knocked out of myths just purely by accident. It was a bit of a and it look it was it was it was nobody's fault. Our beautiful team leader has not been very well at all. She's had COVID, she's been unwell, and normally our deputy team leader is in the US, our team leader's in the UK, and usually they've got it pretty much covered. Now, deputy team leader was away, like having a fabulous time, as she should have been at Disney, and our poor team leader fell asleep and forgot to heal us in time because she was asleep. And we got a message, I think this was on Friday, which just went, I'm so sorry, team, we're out. And I think I just stood there looking at my phone going, what? <laughs> just, it took me a minute for it to register. It's like, what? what? How? But, eh. Anyway, afterwards it was like, you know, we said to her, this is not your fault, my darling, it's fine, it's absolutely fine. I think we were just, we were going so, rolling with it so well and, you know, we had our strategy and all of a sudden it was just like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine, that's all good, it's no worries. We were just regroup, ready for the next round, it'll all be good, it'll be fine, so... Um, but I think I'll keep stitching on this because I just, I do enjoy it on the train. So, um, and uh, making good uh, good progress on it. So I, it's not going to be a finish this year because there's 36,000 stitches to it and I've only done about 2,000. So that'll be a finish for another year. Right, I have to move some of these projects because I have this stupid sofa which kind of sinks in the middle. So I sit in the middle and everything just kind of pours in. <laughs> on either side and just buries me underneath so um and so let me just move that to the floor then let's have a look on my list where i'm at because i have now covered my new stars i've covered my whips we are 50 minutes in i'm not going to make this in an hour i can tell you um right so i've told you all about the games uh, i told you about how unceremonious and like out of myths uh, which is good, it's fine. We decided rather than do myths to make ourselves feel better, we're gonna do a start fest. <laughs> we've decided our team, we've got, we're, and the hashtag, <clears throat> if you would like to join us, it is Easter Start Fest. Our plan is over the course of the Easter weekend, we are going to start as many projects as we possibly can with, I think we've agreed 200 stitches per project, and we're just gonna go for it and see how many we get. Now, I hear you ask, how does that fit in with your 50 starts for your 50th year? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll still only do 50 starts. Maybe I'll just leave those ones aside because their starts to make us feel better and still do my 50 starts and then just have another 20 on top. Or maybe, because I've got two finishes, I can have five new starts per finish or more, <laughs> maybe. And that's outside of my 50 starts. I don't know. I haven't worked that out yet. But all I know is we are going to do a start fest. Starts at the beginning of the Easter weekend, so on the Friday. And I, mean, I know I have a stack of stuff I want to start. Uh, all the rest of the team have sort of said yes. We've got stuff. So we're we're gonna we're there. We've got stuff. We're going to start. So if you would like to join us for our Easter Start Fest, we'd love to have you along. Um, and you can pick however many stitches you do. You can start with a hundred stitches. You can start with two hundred stitches. You can say I want to start five things, or you could be like me and I just say I'm going to start all the things until I've run out of weekend. And then I'm not going to start anything else until probably April. Uh, so that uh, is where we got with our games. So we're just plugging along with our other games um, while we wait for the myths round to um, complete. And then there's usually a bit of a break before the next one starts. But but we, we love it. I love it. <laughs> it's that whole competitive kind of like quick quick, need to stitch. Oh my God, I need to get 200 stitches in. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been attacked, etc. I absolutely love it. It's brilliant. 
Um, okay, so let me talk a little bit more about the retreat. Um, so the retreat was a Mirabilia retreat. Nora Corbett was there. Seeing I'm editing, I may as well stick in a picture right now of me and Nora. So there you go. In fact, the reason I've just paused is because I'm, I'm, I'm sticking. Future Nancy has st stuck the picture right over the top so you can see. I'm also going to stick in a picture of me with two other fabulous floss tubers. Um, Carolyn, who is my fellow Adelaide floss tuber. She is floss tube stitcher. Uh, no, yes, the floss tube stitcher. Oh, sorry, brain fog. Um, and she and I flew over together. We spent a lot of time together. We sat together. It was wonderful. It was so nice to spend time with her. And then the other lady in the picture is Sabrina. That is Lady Marmalade Stitches. Is that right, Sabrina? Lady Marmalade Stitches. Anyway, she was also a floss tuber. Check her out. She's lovely. It was so wonderful to meet her as well. And her friend um, Trina, who was just a new stitcher and clearly had a lovely time. It was so good to meet them both. And Sabrina, we are starting our contemporary cross for my birthday. So don't forget, I'm calling it out here publicly. We've got a contemporary cross project that you've got one you wanna start, I've got one I wanna start. So we're doing that for my birthday, April 22nd. So, um, so I got a chance to meet them and I also got a chance to meet the lovely lady from Paddock Lane. Um, she dyes beautiful hand dyed fabric. I've used a piece of hers. If any of you remember the baby sample I did with the bunny and the balloon, that was on a piece of Paddock Lane fabric. Absolutely gorgeous. So um, I check her um, floss tube out. Talk about brain frog. Her, the name of her channel has completely escaped me. I've got it written down somewhere. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just put it down here. See, I'm having to edit anyway. Um, so, and she was wonderful as well. And she kind of did some interviews with some floss tubers as well. So it was so good to meet her too. Um, and there was a lot of gorgeous Mirabilia finishes and Nora Corbett finishes. There was a whole brag table and it was just, it's always good to see these projects stitched up because you just don't realise quite how beautiful they are until you've seen them stitched up. Um, and it really inspires you to say, yeah, I want to do this one or I really want to do that one. You see the, the different conversions people have done, different fabrics, etc. It's just great. So um, it was a fabulous retreat. And like all retreats, you just never want it to end. Um, it was up in Brisbane, so it was hot. I got out to run every day. Well, not quite, I didn't on the Sunday, but um, which was really nice. And I got to catch up with um, my a lovely group of ladies that I met on the first Mirabilia retreat and the second and the third that I went on um, back pre-COVID. Um, so I stayed with Louise and Liesl and Anita. And by the way, Liesl also has a floss tube. She's very quiet about it. It's called Lee Stitches. So check her out as well. She she didn't, didn't say, you know, a huge amount about it, but she's got some incredible projects. And one of the ones she has got is a heaven and earth, which she's doing extreme cross country. And Oh, the patience. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So, um, so fabulous group of women. We all got to stay together. We chatted. And <laughs> we were chatting and laughing and stitching so late on the night, on the Saturday night, that we had security come and bang on the door and tell us to keep quiet. It was 9.30 at night and we were cross-stitching. But clearly, we're just renegade women and security came and banged on our door and told us to keep it down. So, so yes, yeah, so <laughs> that was interesting. I don't think I've had that happen to me for 30 years, but <laughs> whatever, it's okay. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, and uh, it, the, the retreat was um, organised by Ronnie, who just did an amazing job. And the gift that she gave us, she... There was 80 of us there. She had stained 80 of these little chests of drawers. We each had one on our table. And then as the, the um, retreat went on, 
we collected little like treasures to put in them. So I got a couple of some beautiful counting pins. Um, then we had, what do we have in here? Oh, let's have a look at this one. So she, uh, she had all these little gifts and they came around. Um, we got a little teeny tiny pair of Kahana scissors, which I actually see there's a little, um, like zipper pulls, which are really cute. And then we got some wax and we got, um, what else did we get in here? Oh yes, a needle minder, which she'd stitched, Ronnie had stitched 80 of these herself. So, you know, phenomenal. The work that she put in for this retreat. Oh, there's a little needle threader as well. Oh, I won't get that out of the bag. There's a little needle threader in there with a little star hanging on the end wax and oh that's just my needles so that's not very exciting but the little piece pièce de, well let me just get my tin pièce de resistance was this teeny tiny little pair of kahana scissors which you can take with you on the plane which i did there we go aren't they cute perfect for airplanes and absolutely gorgeous. So that was all the little gifts that we got. So generous. So I'd love to go again next year. We'll just have to see how finances go, but I've already, I put my name down saying that I really would like to go. Um, so yeah, so that was my retreat experience. Uh, retreats are great. The next one, the next one is Vic Stitches, which is at the beginning of May. Oh God, I've got a lot going on in May. Uh, and I will get to finally meet the lovely Carla. I mean, it's like we chat constantly and we've never actually met. <laughs> so I can't wait. It's just going to be great to actually like go, oh my God, you're a real human being. This is amazing. <laughs> so um, so I think that one's the first weekend in May. So it's the next retreat. <laughs> it's probably not, it's not far off. I need to think about it. But I've got quite a lot going on in May. So anyway, so that was the retreat. Right, on my list now is all my haul. <laughs> some new acquisitions uh i've got quite a few but it's been six weeks so you know all right so let me get my pile lots of fabric Blech. sorry uh oh no there's another one <clears throat> all right oh gosh this is all falling on top of me here <laughs> so i feel like i'm just like it's like i'm in quicksand everything's sinking down okay so i bought this lovely kit, Design Works. I bought this, uh, Liesl was selling this, so I snapped it up. I really like Design Works kits. There's a couple I've spotted that I really like, but this one is just, oh, it's beautiful. I'm so unusual. So I got that one. Um, I also bought um, this little fairy. This is Evening Primrose uh, by Nora Corbett. And the other Nora, uh, sorry, um, where is it? Mirror I bought was Nightingale, which I love. So I didn't buy too many Mirabilias because as you know, if you've been watching my floss tube for a while, you'll know that I've already got quite a lot. So I probably there's two more that I really, really want. Um, one is the um, Black Forest one which looks similar to my willow queen and the other one is called echo lake which is really really pretty so they're the only two that i'm really keen to get my hands on so otherwise i really probably should just teach the ones i've got shouldn't i <laughs> um and speaking of that i bought a piece of fabric specifically uh fat quarter of opalescent hand dyed opalescent See that because then you don't have to see the price tag because it scares me. Um, I bought this specifically to do Touching the Autumn Sky, which I have and have had for a while, so it's probably about time I stitched it. Um, it's a 20 well, you can see that 28 count, even weave, opalescent, and it's kind of got this beautiful sort of mottled. Oh, gorgeous! So I bought that specially for Touching the Autumn Sky. Um, I also got oh, it's not enormously exciting but we went out to visit 
All Threads, which is a LNS in Brisbane. And coming from Adelaide, where we don't really have any LNSs, it was pretty exciting to be able to go into a cross stitch shop. And I just got a piece of 16 count black Ada, specifically for this one by a two by two stitch art, which I got off Etsy. Um, and I saw, because I saw somebody posted up on Facebook, this particular pattern done on black in white with sort of gold in and around each of the shapes. And oh, it's so pretty. I was like, I just, I have to have it. So I went and bought it straight away. And then when I was up there, I got um, a fat quarter, I think of um, 16 count. So I'll do that on there. So that was another acquisition. Uh, also bought, oh, this was also, we were just um, from Stash Unload. Uh, this is a piece of 20 count opalescent. Um, it's an interesting size, but I have the perfect project for it. Well, I haven't bought it yet, but I have it on Etsy. Um, it is by Dying for Cross Stitch, eight, uh, 20 count Jobelin. And um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful, like kind of night sky. So yeah, so I have a good project for that one. So I got that. And then I got a little tiny piece of uh, 28 count. It's like a sky, as you can see. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do on that yet, but, but it's very pretty. So I'll do something on that. Um, and I also got a fairly large piece of oh, pink opalescent from Sparklies. This was a fabric of the month. I bought this also from Liesl. It's sort of a pink 28 count opalescent. You can't really see the sparkles in it. Oh, there you can. So there's a couple of mirabilias I'd quite like to do on that. Uh, garden. Oh, I can't remember what she is. This is a lady playing the violin, I think would look beautiful on this one. So um, I can't remember the name of that one. Garden something or other. Garden Prelude, maybe? I don't know, something like that. So that's that one. Is that all the fabric I bought? Yes. Uh, I also bought this one. This was also, Lisa was offloading this on Stash Unload. Um, it's an artisy chart. It's called African Style. I love it. You could kind of try and find a piece of fabric like that to do it on rather than doing the whole background, but I don't know. I think that background really works. So obviously full coverage. So, so that was that one, which I really like. And oh, I'm sitting on these. Let's not sit on these. Oh, I've got two kits actually, which I got early on in February. I bought these both off Stash and Load. This is one, it's a Dimensions Gold Collection that I've been hunting for for ages. So that's that one. Oh, there's my ring light. There it is. Uh, I adore this one. Um, so it's kind of in my stash. I don't know when I'll start it. <laughs> maybe at Easter. Ha ha, maybe. Maybe that'll be started then. And then another one I got off stash on load, which I just fell in love with straight away. Also full coverage. Even though it's been, it's on a grey... 14 count Ada, it is entirely covered and it's just so beautiful, unusual. Lots of greys on grey, so, but, oh, it's gorgeous. So, yeah, so that was another one that I got off Stash and Lowe's. Uh, off Etsy, obviously I got the 2x2 two two stitch art. I also I bought a couple from Vivsters, which I've been wanting for a while. This has been on my wish list for a while. So that is 1920s Art Deco Lady, which I love. Love the colours. And I got this one, which is called England Railway Poster. And that just reminded me of when I used to live in Surrey. <laughs> Uh, it's full coverage as well, but I I just love it. I would I'd love to have that hanging on my wall. <laughs> it means I've got to finish it. Yeah, I'm not very good at finishing things, but so I bought those two. And oh, one more, one more. So as many of you will know, <clears throat> during uh, towards the end of February, actually it was while I was on retreat. Um, Michelle from Heaven and Earth Designs announced that she was discontinuing a list of probably about 10 designers 
and that you had until Monday to basically buy the charts. So um, we all sat there on the Saturday night at the retreat going, oh my God, running through all the charts to see if there was any. There was one which was on my wish list, which I thought I, I need, if I don't get it, I'll regret it. Uh, <laughs> it sounds terrible. I think this is the only time I've paid full price for a heaven and earth chart, because usually I wait for the sales, but it was like, I can't wait. So it's called Run With Me. There you go, and it's by Renee Beer Temple. I love it because obviously I'm a runner. I'm a redhead. I don't look like that. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't. <laughs> but still, um, uh, but yeah, I just I just adore it. It's it's not that big. It's four fifty by three fifty three. Um, so. Who knows when I'll start that one again? Who knows? It might be in April. I'm oh, sorry, at Easter. Uh, so yeah, so I bought that before it became yet another one of the discontinued charts. So that was that. Uh, I think that's my haul. Oh, that's my haul. That's it. So, wow. One hour, 10 minutes. Not too bad. It's because I've been talking really quick. Um, I thought this would take longer. So that's that's good. Um, I'm not going to show you what I pulled to work on this uh, month because um, I will try and get a, flo a, a, a floss tube filmed a little sooner next time. Um, it really all depends on when I have kids and what's going on, etc. Um, but my future plans for my floss tube, I would love to, like, I have all the best intentions to try and video every couple of weeks it just it's just not happening this is the hard thing it just doesn't because there's uh, well first of all I've got stitching to do but secondly it's you know it's it's pretty hard I can't I can't film when I've got the kids here it can only be really when they go to their dads so um and then it's kind of this rush trying to get the filming done and get things edited and get it up online and you know so it's actually it's a it's a big process doing these things so um so I will keep having the intention of trying to do it every couple of weeks, but it will probably stretch out to three weeks, four weeks. And it'd be nice if I could do one at the beginning of each month because then I can kind of pull out which things I'm going to be doing for the month and that's all lots of fun because we all love watching that. But um, but that, again, it doesn't always happen. It, it will coordinate on, you know, how things are going with the children. So... Um, but I also have said, it was actually Carla's suggestion that I do a non-cross-stitch whip parade because as some of you may know, I used to be a big embroiderer. Um, I actually taught embroidery for a while and I've got, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I have a lot of unfinished projects. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Me? Unfinished projects? No, surely not. So, um and she said, oh, I'd love to see them. So I think one day when I actually clear out my, my landfill of a craft room, um, I, I, I will pull them out and show my non-cross-stitch embroidery whips. Uh, and who knows, it might inspire me to actually go and finish some of them. I don't know. I don't know. I cross-stitch is way too more, it's way too engaging. I don't think I'm going to be distracted by anything non-cross stitch for a while that's for sure so um and that's one of my plans as i said the only other major plan really is our easter start along which will be pretty exciting so that will mean that next video there'll be a lot of new starts again um and who knows it might be a hundred new starts for my 50th year I don't know. I don't. I don't care. I, my goal is to start everything I own at some point, because as I've said before, why would I afford it if I didn't want to stitch it? Although I did discover something the other day, which I think is even more reason to be starting all the things now. I've got a lot of stuff because I've been collecting cross stitch stuff for twenty five, maybe longer, twenty twenty, nearly thirty years, a long time, and. Um, the stuff that I spent good money on 20 odd years ago, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> Why didn't I start it then? If I'd started it then, I probably would have gone, oh, you know what, I'm going to finish that. But because I didn't start it then, I was like, no, 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 I can only start something when I finish something. 
Um, they're now sitting there. I've got all these charts and stuff, which I'm like, oh, I don't actually think I want to stitch this now. <laughs> So that says to me all the things I have now that I love and that I'm really excited about, I need to get started now. So that's my reasoning. I'm sticking with it. it. makes me feel better. So anybody else, you're welcome to borrow that reasoning if you like, but I think it's a good one. So, um, uh, so yeah, so that's about it. Now, a little bit about life. If you don't want to hear about my life, it's fine. You can go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for seeing all my crazy cross stitch stuff. If you would like to hear a little bit about my life, it's not that exciting, but um, so uh, let's start with the most important thing, my running. Okay, I have a big race coming up in eight weeks time. I'm running a hundred miles. Um, Yes, that is 160 kilometers for anybody who doesn't work in miles. It's a very, very, very long way. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit scared about it now. Um, but, you know, we've still got eight weeks to go. I'm running it with my bestie. The two of us will we'll, 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 we'll pull each other through. So, uh, which means my training is really starting to ramp up. Um, that means I'm having to run longer on the weekends that I can. It's very hard with the kids. I can't really run long, long with the children. But when I don't, like today I did a 20, tomorrow I've got to do a 25. And we're building up. And then on my 50th, my 50th birthday is actually on a Monday. On the Sunday, Beth and I, Beth's my bestie, she and I are going to run 50K because why not? That's what you got to do for your 50th birthday is run 50K. She's found this lovely ruse for us to run which has several pubs on the way <laughs> so, so it's not going to be all hard work there will be stopping for beers at least at least once or twice on the run but the goal is to do a 50k we've got to do a couple of 50s training runs leading into it and then um, our plan is it should take us about 30 hours it's tough terrain as well this is not an easy race um, it's up in um, further up north in South Australia in a place called the Flinders Ranges, which is absolutely beautiful, but it's not flat by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, so yeah, very technical race. So 30 hours, I think if we make 30 hours, we'll be pretty pleased with ourselves. So um, that means we'll obviously go, we start at about 11 on the Friday. We go all through the night. And our plan is hopefully to finish by the evening on Saturday. And no, we won't stop. I mean, we, we have aid stations, so we stop and have something to eat. But we won't stop to sleep. We'll just just keep going. So so that's that coming up. So that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, family. Oh, I've got a teenager. Well, he's not even a teenager yet. That's hard. Things have been really tough since my son started high school. Um, he's just doing what 12 year old boys do, I guess. Um, lots of door slamming, calling me names, you know, tears, crying, coming and then telling me he loves me, then slamming the door on my face again, then stomping up the, you know, around the house, then not wanting to talk to me. I mean, honestly, I, I have whiplash from the mood changes that I'm getting from him at the moment. I don't really know how to handle it, but somehow we're making our way through. And of course, this is just the beginning. He's not actually even turned 13 yet. <laughs> so I'm tired. I'm so tired. Uh, I, everybody keeps saying, he will get through this. You will come out the other side. And I'm like, yes, but will I still be sane? And will I have any non-gray hair by them? I don't know. But uh, so, yeah, so every day is a new bit of excitement on that. Um, my beautiful daughter, who is in that gorgeous sweet spot of nine, ten years old, nearly ten, she keeps sort of saying, oh, it's okay, mummy, it's all right, you know, we'll get through, etc." And I'm like, I smile at her and go, yeah, we will until you start doing this to me as well. And then what am I going to do? But um, 
But yes, so I'm sure this is a problem all parents go through, uh, whether you're like me and you're a solo parent or whether you're, you know, in, in a, a, a couple, if you're dealing with teenagers or preteens, as this case may be, it's hard, hard, hard work. So yes, so that's been very stressful. Um, menopause, it sucks. <laughs> Uh, I am on HRT now. I, I, after the last conversation I had with you, I hadn't tried it yet. I've started it. My anxiety has gone down, considering what I'm dealing with with my son. It's pretty good. But there is no doubt my anxiety has definitely dropped. I mean, it was at such a peak. Um, I'm still finding I have sleep disruption. I'm not sleeping as well as I could. Um, but at least my moods are a little better, uh, which is good. Um, I'm, I, I'm still struggling with the sort of, it's, I wouldn't say it's a loss of fitness. That's not what it is. It's just a change, like things hurt. So, you know, even when I was out running today, I, you know, it takes me, two or three kilometers before my legs are kind of moving and things hurt. Now, you know, people who don't run might go, oh my God, two or three kilometers. But three or four years ago, I could walk out the door and within 500 meters, everything was loose. I was good, I was going. Whereas now everything hurts for at least the first half hour of my run. And then I find it a lot harder. I've, I haven't got that beautiful flow that I used to be able to. Things just hurt. And, and I know that, you know, there's supplements I can take, which I am. I'm taking collagen and I take glucosamine and various things like that. I've tried to up my protein, etc. But it's that's one thing I'm finding very difficult to come to terms with is just the body changes and just how much harder things are to do um and you know i'm not you know i'm i'm pretty slim but even that i'm noticing it's harder to keep the weight down as well and you know all of these things it's just it's just difficult like i'm sorry but menopause sucks there's nothing good about it <laughs> but the only good thing about it is it's transitory and eventually it'll come to an end but uh, um but yeah so I, I think at this point the hrt is good i think it's working for me um it doesn't work for everybody uh, but there are so many other solutions out there and if you are experiencing any of the symptoms uh, whether you're in perimenopause or what stage you're at it's worth exploring the different solutions because as several people have said, you do not have to suffer. This is not mandatory. As women, we, we suffer a lot. We go through a lot throughout our lives. We do not have to just shut up and put up with this. There are ways that we can ease ourselves through and you're just finding the right way for you, whether that is you know, HRT, whether it's something herbal, whether it's, you know, sort of, um, there's all sorts of different types, there's biosynthetic, etc. There are all sorts of different things and it's really, really worth exploring those just to help you through because unfortunately it is a long, long process. It's not something which is over in several months. It goes on for years and years. So, um, and then there's that whole identity shift as well is who am I now? You know, now that I am, you know, a menopausal woman, who am I? Because I'm not who I was before, but I don't know who I'm yet to become. So, so yeah, so these are all kind of things which are worth considering if you're at that stage. If you're not at that stage, <laughs> you will be. <laughs> and if you're through that stage, oh, I envy you. <laughs> I can't wait. So yeah, so that's it. So that's life. Uh, my job is good. I am with my new judge. I love my judge. He's fabulous. I really enjoy working for him. Um, we have a bit of a laugh, which is great. So I feel very comfortable in, in chambers and I do enjoy going to work. I still wish I didn't have to work full time, but 
you know, needs must. It is what it is. So, right, I think that's all I've got to tell you. I think now I've rabbited on about my life for 10 minutes. So if you've stuck around this long, thank you. <laughs> if you haven't, that's fine. I would, you wouldn't even be here anyway. So I'm going to wrap it all up now. Hour and a half. That is well and truly long enough. I've talked way too much now. And so hopefully I will see you in two weeks, maybe four weeks. I don't know, uh, but it'll be sooner than this one. So in the meantime, happy stitching uh, and, uh, and we'll see you soon. Okay, see ya, bye.